The David Suzuki Foundation released its second annual report on the federal government's progress on ending all long-term drinking water advisories in First Nations. For more on the report, I'm joined by Alea Boisvert, spokesperson for the David Suzuki Foundation. Thanks for joining us, Alea. What are the key points coming out of this year's report? Well, what we've discovered through this year's report is that while the Minister of Indigenous Services has made several um, very important public announcements regarding the intent of the government to end long-term drinking water advisories by 2021, that in fact there's still more work that needs to be done and uh, challenges within the federal bureaucracy of actually fulfilling that commitment within the time frame and the budget that they've allocated. The report underlines three urgent areas that need to be addressed by the federal government. What are they? So what we're really, what we've discovered that we need to see is that there needs to be further investment in and sharing of successful models where First Nations have been leading within their communities to find solutions to ending the drinking water crisis. And this includes investing in the development and implementation of source water protection plans that are consistent with the United Nations Direc Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. So this is really important as far as ensuring that First Nations have say over what happens in their traditional territories on reserve with respect to the protection of their waters. Uh, the second point is that we know that we need to ensure that there are expedited but sound processes to upgrade systems. With 91 long-term drinking water advisories that were announced in uh, January and now actually 92 as of just a couple days ago, uh, we know that um, the funding of these systems has to happen quickly and thoroughly and also that there needs to be adequate funding for operations and maintenance to ensure the sustainable solutions to um, the drinking water crisis in First Nations. And lastly, just that we, we know the government needs to develop um, legislation and regulations with respect to drinking water in First Nations with First Nations as partners. And we were really happy to see that the Assembly of First Nations has been tasked with uh, consulting and facilitating conversations about redesigning the process for uh, dialogue around federal legislation that will ensure the federal government is held accountable to um, ensuring clean drinking water in communities. Okay, well, thanks for joining us today, Alea, and giving us those insights. Thank you so much for having me.